Uh, I would like to come back to our previous guest, um, Arthur Berman. He's a petroleum geologist and uh, his message is that we are in the next few years, uh, we will, might have a decrease in production of oil in the world as well as natural gas. And this will have you know, huge pressure on the global economy and there will be very uh, big you know, challenge, uh, to say the least, to adapt to a decreasing uh, availability of energy. Uh, and the short term alternatives, according to Arthur Berman, will not be there. We will have to adapt to, to this reality. And uh, this might uh, mean that we have to decrease our consumption. Uh, he says that we should invest in renewables, definitely, but we also have to be realistic about the energy reality. I would like to hear what you th think about this. And I know that we mentioned in the, in the previous episode that this technology you are providing in only three months you could uh, you mean, you know, provide a production line, I think you said. Um, so, yeah. Yes, if we start this by reducing the energy consumption, I think when you look at the food and beverage industry, it's hard to think that people will use less food and beverage just because the oil is getting restricted. Or that people in, in countries that is growing, like Nigeria or India, where people are getting more and more money, that they would not buy a refined food and beverage. So I think the food and beverage industry will continue to grow. The energy consumption in the food and beverage industry, it's already quite uh, efficient. We find somewhere sometimes that you could make it more efficient, but basically you need this heat to pasteurize the milk and to, to clean the bottles and everything. So I think in the food and beverage industry, you actually need to go away from fossil fuel and find this heat somewhere else. So, but we also find in, in some other industries that this energy efficiency is, is far away. For example, we work in the tea industry and to dry one ton of tea, you burn five tons of firewood. But here you can make the burning of firewood more efficient and you can at least cut it by half if you combine firewood with solar thermal and reduce the energy consumption in this drying process. So there are uh, savings also. But when it comes to the speed of the transition, we have seen now photovoltaic is, of course, a fantastic technology, replacing electricity from coal plant. So when you charge your iPhone, you're actually using green electricity. But it has taken us almost 20 years to build this industry and PV today provide 1% of the world's electricity usage. So it's a long process until renewable electricity from wind and PV can replace all the fossil fuel that is used today. And then when it comes to heat, that's a total different sector that needs to find their own solutions. But I think what Yuan was referring to is how quickly we can set up solar thermal fields compared to the PV industry. Because the PV industry, when you need to double the PV industry, there is a very expensive uh, supply line from the mines doing the silicon and this very difficult refinery, refinery doing super clean um, silicon and then all the other different processes until you get the PV panel. But our solar collectors, it's basically some steel and some glass. You get the parabolic shape so that the incoming sun is focused on this narrow pipe in the center. And suddenly you have 160 degree hot heat and steam that you both can use directly in your industry or you can store it from summer to winter. So the material that we need to make the solar collectors, it has only three months energy payback time, while a PV panel on the, or a windmill, it had two to four years energy payback time. So we need very little raw material to produce an enormous amount of heat when we do the heat conversion directly. And that is partly because we have 76.4% efficiency compared to PV that might have 18, 20. Hmm. But let's say you live in the U.S. Uh, uh, they don't have, as I understand it, that kind of district heating systems we have. Um, they burn natural gas, basically. Um, 
mostly and uh, so so how could they make use of either it's you know we're talking about your kind of technology with solar heaters or some other alternatives to replace this mm. uh, one big uh, district heating uh, uh, use in the US are all the university campuses. So basically they all have a big fossil fuel boiler in one end of the campus and then pressurized hot water going to all the buildings on the campuses. So that's a specific niche market that we are looking at that could stop burning summer and run on solar thermal instead. Then when it comes to single uh, houses, then there are other solar thermal technologies that can produce all the hot water that is needed for a house during a year in combination with renewable electricity. Yeah. So I think solar thermal, both for small houses, uh, industries and cities, is an important part of this transition. Uh, and it is much more energy efficient than what it would be to use just electricity. But our technology, that is for industries and district heating. Yeah.